Hello, everyone. I'm Lindsay. I lead the design team at Hinge. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the unique challenges of designing for modern dating. So for those of you who aren't familiar with dating apps, congrats. That's quite the accomplishment. Um, but for the rest of us, you may have heard of Hinge. We call ourselves the dating app that's designed to be deleted, meaning we're really for intention daters who are looking for a little bit more than a hookup. And so designed to be deleted is really our tagline. And everything we do as a design team, as a product team, is really meant to get people off the app. And I think that a lot of people have the misconception that dating apps want to keep you there, keep you scrolling. But for us, you know, our best marketing is to get people out on great dates and actually into relationships. Um, and that's why we really pride ourselves in being a very effective dating app. So I want to start off by talking to you guys a little bit about um, when dating apps first came onto the scene. So I want to take you back to 2012. So when dating apps really first went mobile, as you guys will probably remember, most of the apps were swiping. And Hinge was also a swiping app at the time. And the great thing about swiping apps was they were really intuitive, really easy to do. But the issue with that interaction was that it really optimized for volume and speed. Um, and it, it optimized less for really getting to know the profiles that you were going through. And so uh, when Hinge really broke into the scene, what a problem that we saw was that a lot of these dating apps were doing the dreaded about me box. This was really the way that users had to articulate who they were and what they wanted. And it was really intimidating. I mean, just looking at the box now, it's a lot to try to figure out how to express yourself in just a few lines, let alone on a dating app. And so when Hinge figured out how we wanted to differentiate and really stand apart, um, we wanted to break that model of swiping and break that model of the, the really intimidating about me box. And so we actually moved towards this longer scrollable profile. Um, and as designers, we know sometimes it's really helpful to introduce a little bit of friction. And so this friction was actually really great because it slowed people down and it helped people articulate, you know, who they were, what they were looking for. And so this became really our new interaction model that we still have today. And so we took that very same box and rather than told daters to express who they were, what we did is we actually gave them some guidance and we allowed them to choose from a variety of questions. So this could say together we could or the nerdiest thing about me. And then the really easy thing we did is we just let users fill in the blank. And so with this model, it took a lot of the pressure off of the user to figure out exactly how to articulate who they were and just told them, pick a prompt, fill in the blank. And today, as I talk about you know, this experience of designing for Hinge and designing for modern dating, what I really wanna emphasize is the power of the prompt. It's something, you know, as a designer that seems so simple, it's basically a rectangle with a question in it. But when you think about it, the power of the prompt is that when you do this at scale and you do this for an app with so many people, um, you really start to see that users can finally express themselves and express the things they care about. And so that very same prompt together we could, when you do this at scale, now you have hundreds of thousands of different answers about what someone wants to do for a date. And it really allows that personality to shine through. And so today you'll hear me talk a little bit more about how we've kept returning to this system of prompts as sort of the basis and the foundation of, of a lot of what we've built at Hinge. So another really wonderful thing that prompts has allowed us to do is that it's kept us in touch with the real world. And so when daters were at home and lockdown was a thing, we had prompts that spoke to dating from home. Whereas now a couple years later, we're surfacing prompts that relate to self-care. We're hearing from singles that mental health is becoming increasingly important and they wanna make sure they're finding a partner who also prioritizes their mental health 
is open to therapy, all the good stuff. And so it's just given us that connection to culture and what's actually happening in the real world. So in the same way that prompts really, it gave people enough structure to be able to say who they were, we wanted to figure out what we could do to inspire people to add more interesting photos of themselves on Hinge. So if you think about it, you know, we all have limited photos of ourselves and we actually want to present on a dating app. And over time, what we started noticing is everyone's profiles just started to look the same. It was almost like users had figured out the recipe. Um, and so you had, you know, the hinge headshot and you had the realistic photo, the not realistic photo. And it just became really hard as a viewer to kind of differentiate between all these daters. And at the end of the day, again, we're motivated to get people on great dates. And if no one can really tell anyone apart on the app, we obviously haven't done our job. So it was important to us to figure out how do we push users and inspire them to, to share just more real photos of, of them in the real world. And so what we did is we thought about how can we take people from the headshot, the classic headshot, to something that's more human and really speaks to, you know, what that person would be like to date. And so this same person, my friend Julia, um, is now shown out in the wild. She's using the prompt, me in the wild. Um, this is us actually out in Bushwick at Mr. Sunday's. And it's a really real representation of what it would be like to hang out with us on the weekends. And so you really start to see that personality coming through. Um, and that same prompt, me in the wild, in someone else's hands could look so different. This is my friend Chris, spends a lot of time on uh, in the week, over the weekends at museums and with photography. And so now you can start to pick apart how dating two of these people would actually be different. Um, and while it may seem simple, it takes a lot to nudge users to this direction of sharing more vulnerably. And so we are really pleased to see that our current prompt system could be applied to photos and really help people branch out. So after all that work, you know, we continue to ask ourselves, what more can we do to push dating profiles? You know, they've largely stayed the same for a really long time. And it's certainly challenging to change behavior with the way people want to share, but we were really inspired and encouraged to uh, figure out, you know, what's the next evolution of these profiles? What are dating profiles 2.0, 3.0? And so we did as any great design or product team does, and we went back to what are the biggest user pain points. And what we've learned through years of research is that the, the top four biggest pain points that people experience on Hinge are the following. The first is efficiency. So people tell us, I'm spending so much time swiping, I'm spending so much time looking at these profiles, and I'm not really sure what the payoff's going to be. What if I spend all this time and no one talks to me or no one wants to meet? The next is a signal problem. So again, just not feeling like these profiles are really getting at someone's true personality and feeling unsure of what they would actually be like. We also hear that there's a big problem in responsiveness. So the, the standard problem of uh, you're spending all this time matching only to end up a, in, into a chat with someone who's not saying anything. Um, a really discouraging experience for a lot of us. And then finally, we hear people time and time again say, I'm unhappy with the dating pool. Um, I'm not totally sure these people are compatible with me. I'm not attracted to them. Um, just a, a general dating app problem that we encounter often. Um, and another data, data point we were really excited about at the time was we honed in on this stat, which was that 75% of our users said it was super hard to gauge chemistry on Hinge. And so in order for us as a design team to figure out how can we do this better, we actually had to start by understanding what is chemistry? What makes two people feel that spark either in real life or in an online environment like Hinge? And so what our research team did was they actually started from the ground up. They asked, 
okay, let's learn about chemistry. What is it? And we actually found out that chemistry between two people really boiled down to three things. The first is that they have positive experiences together. Pretty intuitive. The second was similarity. So um, I think it's really easy to kind of stop at the surface and think of similarity as we have the same hobbies or we like the same music. Um, we always felt that that was going to be a huge distraction because research shows that it's not about having the same things in common, but it is about kind of being similar people. So whether that's having the same values or having the same outlook on life, that was actually really important for chemistry. And finally, the last word was really this idea of synchronicity. So this was that thing that's a little bit hard to articulate, but is maybe it's the way someone laughs. Um, and for us, we thought a lot about the way someone speaks and how that really provides this, this element of synchronicity. So we were really excited when we stumbled upon this word to figure out how can we actually bring that into a dating app context, knowing that these things are so much easier in the real world, but we wanted to figure out if we're going to do this well, if we're going to actually compete with real world dating, um, people ditching the apps to go to events, we needed to figure out how to get, bring this into profiles, how to bring this into the experience. And so at the time, we really stumbled upon this fork in the road where we felt that the two avenues we could go down were video or voice. We had designed a video dating experience during lockdown, which really had pretty low adoption, unfortunately. Um, and we also just brought a lot of video concepts to research. And time and time again, what we heard from users is that Video, video as a as a concept in dating was pretty scary for people. Um, you can imagine it's pretty vulnerable. It's a high bar. It's something that people aren't used to. Um, whereas voice sounded like something that people would be interested in, may not be you know fully excited about, but at least they weren't actually terrified of doing it. So for that reason, we decided to double down on voice and figure out a test that we could run to figure out, you know, if that, if that was something we could really bring into the experience. So we did a ton of explorations. And when we first decided we wanted to pursue voice, I think we, we started off thinking maybe it's really just you introducing yourself in your profile. We were really trying to figure out what's the right packaging with voice. I think you'll see in a couple of slides, we ended up sticking with the prompt system, which feels so obvious now, but at the time, I think we were really unsure of what was the right way to introduce voice and make it easy enough so people understood it right away, even though this was something they had not tried in other dating apps. So we brought a lot of concepts to research as you do. We had users pick apart our designs, tell us what was confusing, what wasn't working. And I really want to highlight that time and time again, the thing we kept hearing is that people were not comfortable with voice. Um, and so actually what a lot of people would tell us is they'd really love to hear it in someone else's profile, but they were pretty terrified to do it themselves. Um, it seemed like everyone had a personal problem with their own voice. Um, so this posed a really unique challenge for the design team. Everyone saying that they can see the value in someone else's profile, but they were really scared to do it themselves. And so we really felt like we had to make this so easy and so simple or else no one was going to try it. And again, what people kept telling us in research is you already have to be so vulnerable. Even photos feel vulnerable for people. So why would they try voice? Why would they put themselves out there? There was also this concern of, well, what if it actually hurts my chances? And so time and time again, why would I kept resonating, resonating in research and in our minds? And it was pretty clear to the design team that this meant that the value was not yet immediately clear and we still needed to do some work. Um, this is a fun anecdote I like to tell because after a lot of exploring, we landed on a final flow that we thought, you know, checked all the boxes. It was one of those moments as a design team, you're in the engineering handoff, you're sitting with engineers and designers were like, we're done. We figured it all out. It's perfect. And I'll never forget sitting with my engineer, Saul, and my designer, Quinn. And as we walked Saul, our engineer, through the flow, he did what he does best and he kept 
probing, kept poking holes in all the designs. Um, and originally what we were gonna do is we we're gonna tell users with every prompt that you already have, you can either choose to have it written or you can record it. And long story short, there were a lot of complications with that flow um, that was requiring users to make a lot of different choices, whether they wanted to delete their old written prompt and try voice. And then the question of, well, what if they didn't like their voice recording? How do they get the written one back? Um, and what we realized as a design team was that it just was not simple enough. And I think a good takeaway for us was, you know, if you're especially trying to get users to try something new that's going to be intimidating, you need to reduce all the noise. You need to give them so few decisions to make so that they actually try it out. And so we ended up scratching that concept, um, went back to the drawing board, and we made a slight change to the way that we package voice. We decided to bring it completely out into its own element. And we called it voice prompts and we just had a very simplified flow. And this also allowed us to even create voice specific prompts. And so it really reduced the confusion when we pulled it out and we created its own little world that could live in profile. Another quick anecdote is that at the time, the design team felt that having a sample answer was going to be really, really huge. Um, it was something that, you know, hearing everyone's concerns, what we realized is we needed to show people that they didn't need to sound like a news anchor. They didn't not need to have a sexy voice. They just needed to speak authentically and say something. It could even be a 10 second, uh, you know, response to a prompt. And so at the final hours, I think it's always it's always tough with MVPs. There's so much debate about what should go in, what should we hold back? And I remember the sample answer was gonna be cut from the MVP, um, but it was not because I happened to live in the same neighborhood as my engineer. And I ran over and I think um, in a couple hours, he sat in his bedroom and watched me record a bunch of these. We were able to squeeze one into the MVP. And we're really glad we did because later in research, we'd hear that it was this sample answer that made everyone feel like this was something that was doable um, and it didn't need to be magical. It just needed to be you and your voice. And so the day came that we finally launched. Uh, we weren't sure anyone would try the feature, but we did get the whole design team in Figma to design this introduction. Uh, it was really fun to just hack away at it. Um, and we really paid attention to just the language as well as even the CTA, check it out. We wanted to make sure that CTA was something very non-committal. Um, you didn't feel like you were about to suddenly start recording your voice. You could just check out the feature and, and browse it a bit. Um, so all those details were really thought through. And to our surprise and delight, um, we had some really nice articles written about us, even you know, publishers saying that we had cracked audio for the first time. And it was super exciting because um, you know, we weren't really sure if anyone would truly believe the value that we saw for voice, which was you know, voice was gonna be something that was gonna be hard for people to get used to. But if they did, then you'd really start to feel kind of the humanness again in dating apps, which have been kind of, it's been kind of gone for a, a, a while. Um, and the other really amazing thing that happened was that voice prompts really went viral. So thanks to, to TikTok, shout out TikTok, but a lot of people started recording their favorite voice prompts from Hinge. Um, and of course, these were sort of the extreme examples of singing or impressions, but uh, it was so fun to watch people enjoy these and be entertained by these. Um, and even more than that, I think when we really dug into the comments section, what we saw is that people were coming to Hinge again. They had, were returning just to see this feature or they were downloading Hinge just to come and listen to these. So it had a really amazing impact on our re registrations. And it also really um, was highly, highly appreciated by Gen Z, which was kind of our new target audience that we were trying to hook onto our app. And now I'm gonna play you a quick voice prompt so you can hear yourself. We're the same type of weird if after a big night out, you wake up the next morning to five different texts to random phone numbers saying, besties for life. 
<laughs> we should definitely hang out soon. Um, Cause yeah, that's, that's the type of weird I am. Awesome. And so to kind of wrap up a couple of things I want to point out that I thought really um, contributed to the success of the feature are the first is just the way we nudge users. So the badging, the nudging, all of those really amazing growth tactics really helped get people into the feature. The second decision we made that I thought was really valuable was we decided to make voice prompt the thing right after someone's profile photo. So you could not miss it. And then finally, we utilize things like half sheets to really meet users where they were and get them to add voice. So many users adopted voice through this half sheet, which was really amazing to see. I think sometimes you don't think those things are gonna be as valuable, but I think it really made it feel a little bit more casual and something you could just do really quickly and then edit it later. And so I think the thing that our team is most proud of looking back on this feature is that something that could have been written off as just entertaining or sort of a fluff feature like voice ended up truly impacting all of these user pain points that are really prevalent in the app today. So it made it more efficient because now you could just straight away hear what someone sounds like. It gave you more signal. Even people who may not, you know, their personality may not come through photos. Now they had another medium and outlet to show their personality or their sense of humor. And I think responsiveness was actually the biggest win. So we were super, super pleased to see that uh, we shifted people away from this circumstance, which is a lot of people's hinge experience today. You match with someone, they like your photo, you don't have a conversation, to getting people to full conversations. We actually saw that if you were someone who added a voice prompt to your profile, you were 17% more likely to make it to a full conversation. Ultimately, this is the kind of thing that leads people to the actual date and then eventually into a relationship. So um, it was a feature that I don't think anyone truly grasped until we fully fleshed it out and showed them that it was actually going to have an impact throughout the entire user journey. So just to wrap up, we took something like prompts and originally applied it to photos to get people to share more authentic photos of them doing real world things, you know, moving them away from just the standard headshot where you really don't learn much about who someone is. And then we use that exact same system prompts and we used it to make something that was really scary for users and something that people said they would not do. And we made it, we paired it with voice so that it would feel much more familiar. Um, and it was something that people were used to. And so it really lowered the bar for people to try this feature for the first time. That's all I have for you guys today, but it's been a pleasure. Um, I'd love to get new followers on Insta uh, or email me any questions. Uh, it was really fun to participate in this and curious to hear what you guys think. And thank you so much.